This video is about the Behringer Multimode Filter slash Resonator 1047, which is part of the ARP 2500 series. Like the oscillator, the mod amp and the filter amp modules, which I reviewed in the previous videos, the 1047 is part of the direct audio path. This multimode filter offers four filter types that we can access simultaneously. It's a 12 decibel per octave two pole filter and it has some interesting features that I haven't seen in other Eurorack state variable filters before. Here to the left we have the only audio input with attenuator and uh, the printed label by the way here was already partly rubbed off when I got this module. Then we have two CV inputs which act on the cut of frequency and both have an attenuator. These inputs have a 1 volt per octave characteristic when the attenuators are in fully clockwise uh, position. So we can achieve a proper keyboard tracking with these CV inputs. This one here is very nice. It's a CV input for the filter resonance. With attenuator, definitely not a feature that every filter has to offer. Probably most important, we have the four independent filter outputs for low pass, high pass, band pass and notch filter. Let's see how they work and I will discuss the filter types first before we come to the resonator part of this module. Filters are used to remove a certain portion of the frequencies that are contained in the input sound in order to shape that sound and alter its character. Typical synthesizer sounds like a saw or a square wave consist of a fundamental frequency and the so-called higher harmonics, which are additional frequencies above the fundamental frequency that determine the character of the sound. A sine wave has no higher harmonics and sounds very pure and clean. While a saw wave has lots of higher harmonics and therefore it has much more character. Consequently, saw waves are suited better for filtering than sine waves, because sine waves simply have no character that we can filter out. Every filter has a filter curve, which describes the amount of attenuation of the frequencies that are contained in the input signal, and this curve is plotted over the frequency range. If you watched my previous video about the filter amp module, you probably know that this here is the filter curve of a low pass filter. So it obviously lets the lower frequencies pass through and blocks off the higher ones. To demonstrate this with the 1047 module, I have configured a sound that consists of six sine waves. so that we receive six equal peaks in the frequency spectrum with a distance of one octave between each peak. And as you can see, I used the Quark Volker FM here to generate these sine waves. The sound now already passes through the 1047 module and we see and hear the low pass output. The filter is currently fully opened, so it lets all frequencies pass through without attenuation. Now let's slowly close the filter we see and hear that the higher frequencies are faded out as we reduce the cutoff frequency. We can measure the filter slope here and see that it has about 12 decibel per octave. So it's a two pole filter. Let's switch to the high pass filter, which lets higher frequencies pass through and blocks the lower ones. So it's the opposite of the low pass. And the slope here is again 12 decibel per octave. Then we have the bandpass output. This lets only a certain band of frequencies pass through and cuts away the lower ones and the higher ones. And we can adjust the center position of this band with the cut of frequency control. The bandwidth of this filter here is quite narrow, roughly one octave and then it starts to drop off to the left and to the right from the center position. And we clearly see the peak in the spectrum and it corresponds to the labeling on the tuning knob. So if we set it to around 2000, we also see that the peak at about 2000 Hz in the spectrum is uh, not as attenuated as the other ones. 
and this holds for the other filter types as well. So this labeling here corresponds to the cutoff frequency of the filter and uh, it's given in Hertz. The filter slope of the bandpass filter is about 6 decibel per octave, so um, this uh, drop to the left and to the right has a shallower um, gradient compared to the low pass or the high pass filter. And finally we have the notch filter, which filters out a narrow frequency band, so it's actually the opposite of the band pass. Again we can set its position with the filter cutoff control, and we see the resulting notch in the frequency spectrum. And this notch is actually quite significant, and we can cut out certain frequencies very precisely. There is a second control here that acts as a multiplier on the notch filter frequency and uh, it has no effect when it is set to 1, so in the 12 o'clock position. But when we set it to 1 half, we immediately see that the notch position has shifted from its initial frequency to about half of this frequency. And this also works in the opposite direction. This control only acts on the notch filter and has no effect on the other filter outputs. And it becomes much more important in combination with the filter resonance. This is a good transition. Now let's have a look at the resonance. Resonance lifts a certain part of the filter curve around the cutoff frequency and boosts the frequencies of the input signal here. For the low pass filter we see the increased peak at the cutoff point and then the slope to the right where the higher frequencies fade out. We also notice this green LED here, which tells us when the filter resonance is aligned with a frequency peak of the input signal. And we clearly see and hear that this frequency then gets boosted. This also works for other inputs like saw waves and the effect becomes very evident This is the high pass filter resonance. And this is the resonating band pass. Quite different is the notch filter behavior. Here we don't see a notch in the frequency spectrum and this is because the notch frequency and the resonance peak are aligned and cancel each other out. Here the notch frequency control comes into action. With this we can offset the notch from the resonance peak. We now see that the notch shifts to lower frequencies when we turn this control counterclockwise while the resonance peak holds its position. The cutoff frequency control still acts on the resonance peak and the notch. And if we turn this notch control clockwise, we shift the notch to the right. And this gives a very unique decoupling of the filter resonance and the notch filter frequency and yields very interesting results.
Then we have this limit switch. Normally it is in norm mode, but we already hear that the filter starts to saturate when we tune the resonance to one of the frequency peaks. When we switch to limit mode, the filter internally tames its circuits and prevents distortion. The output gets significantly quieter, but yields a cleaner result. The Behringer Quick Start Guide is actually very helpful here, and it is in general much more informative than for the other modules. There is no continuous self-resonance with this filter like we had with the FiltM for example, so even with maximum resonance we don't hear any output. Instead, this filter can ring, and this is a very interesting feature. Let's demonstrate this with a short burst of white noise that we feed into the input. This white noise comes from here, goes through the filter amp, which is used as a simple VCA here and is modulated by a short decay envelope. And then the resulting short noise burst goes to the 1047 input. This is how the noise burst sounds. And if we now increase the resonance again, we can actually trigger a self resonance of this multimode filter. And this slowly decays over time. And this is like um, when we strike some resonant object like a bell or a guitar string, which then also starts to resonate and also this resonance fades over time. A very cool feature. That's the outline of the multimode filter slash resonator 1047. The overall quality of this module is okay, like with the other modules of the ARP 2500 series. Now let's listen to some sounds of this filter to get an impression of its character.
these were only a few examples of the very different um, sounds that you can create with this module and uh, it depends on the input sound as well as on the filter type and you can even mix those uh, those filter outputs together and there is an incredible range of different sounds that you can create with this multi-mode filter. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.